Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. Let me tell you, it gets harder and harder to do these videos every single week. The Jaguars now are currently on a five-game losing streak, following falling to the Indianapolis Colts 29-26 on Sunday. And ladies and gentlemen, as I do per usual on Monday, we are going to recap it. So ladies and gentlemen, I am Tree from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts week number 10. Recap, position grades, and players of the week. Now, before I hop into the offense and the special teams, let's go over some keynotes that I noticed throughout the game. So, first of all, the defense did not play like a unit whatsoever in the first half. This elite defense, the saving grace of this Jaguar team, could not step up in the biggest moments of the game. Though it did in the last series before the Jags got the ball for the final time, that was aided by one drop and also a Telvin Smith interception that was bobbled and again would have been a big completion. This Jaguar defense is giving up on the season before the season has already ended. At least that's how it seems like. Now that's how they were playing in the first half. Come the second half, the Jaguars defense kind of stepped up a little bit more, but it wasn't really the defense that stepped up. It was more of the offensive strategy. What they were doing in the first, I mean, the second half was they were going to keep Andrew Luck and the offense off the field, which I think was executed very, very well. Long drives, you know, pounding it into the end zone, making sure you take points, with the exception of the missed field goal uh, by Josh Lambeau, which we'll get into in a little bit, which is arguably forgivable because Josh Lambeau has been consistently probably the best player on this Jaguars team. Now, offensively, they did good. Not letting them have the ball in the second half was a good thing. Because that's what they were doing, you know, scoring 29 points at will. Eric Ebron, which goes to my next point, we could not cover a tight end to save our entire existence. Telvin Smith, for some reason, has taken the biggest step back I've ever seen. He went from like a 90 overall to like an 83. Like in one season, just a huge step back. Like, I don't know if it's the scheme, the play calls, or what's going on with Telvin Smith. But for some reason, he is just not having a good 2018-2019 season. And it goes for, you know, they couldn't cover the tight end. On one play, Eric Ebron was completely alone in the end zone. And everybody on the defense was looking confused. I was in that area like, well, was that my guy? Was that your guy? You know, like, that's not what elite defenses do. Like, if you look, you know, people are probably going to, there's this Twitter page and it's called, uh, Old Jaguar takes exposed, which is a it's, it's a great Twitter page. But I have a feeling, oh, they're gonna they might go through some of my videos and you know talk about how I was saying that this defense is one for the books, one for the all time greats. Uh, this 2018-2019 Jaguars um, <coughs> defense, but unfortunately, that has not been what we have had. So, and Leonard Fournette, he made a difference. Uh, I don't really get the hate that a lot of people are putting on Leonard Fournette. Uh, I understand that his yards per carry is low, but that's kind of like his job. You know, he gets the hard grind out yards to put us in third and manageable, and he made a difference. And I really think if he was in some of these games this year, we would have won a little bit more games than we already than we have, you know. I think Leonard made that much of a difference because Blake didn't have to throw the ball a lot. He only threw the ball 30-something times which was perfect, and the throws that he threw were throws that Blake Bortles should make. You know, this is like the, the, like, Leonard Fournette's injury really fucked up this organization and really fucked up a lot of things. Now, we win this game if Rashad Green just does not see the field. I don't understand. You have a practice squad player who has not played football in a really long time, and you put him in in a crucial situation. Like, let's, let's neglect, neglect the fact that, that if it was a fumble, if it wasn't a fumble, if he was down, if he wasn't down, you know, things like that. Let's neglect all of that. In the whole, like, in the first place, why the fuck is he in the in the game and why is Blake throwing him the ball? Caught it, fumbled, cost us the game. Now, we could have been in a situation to play for overtime, and I don't know how that would have went if the Colts got the ball first. But, you know, if we got the ball first, maybe we win. 
Also, you know, we were driving, I think we're at the 20-something yard line. We, we could have punched it in for a score as well. So, you know, just Rashad Green, man. That was the killer of the game, man. I was so upset. My live reactions feed was just terrible at my parents' house. I don't know what was going on. So I didn't do live reactions right the whole second half. And, oh, if you would have seen my reaction to when Rashad Green fumbled, it wasn't really even much of a reaction. It was more kind of just like a sadness, like just a quietness. And also, let's just talk about how we snapped the ball, and then they went back and reviewed it anyway, even though we snapped the ball. Like, I, I mean... That's against the rules, isn't it, NFL? Isn't that against the rules? I don't know. I thought it was. Anyway, so let's get into the grades of these special teams and the offense. I can already tell this is going to be a long video. So for the special teams, uh, DJ Truck had a couple of good returns. He stepped up in the return game. Um, he's not really a wide receiver, at least not right now, which, you know, like I said, I had a hot take last year. This kid could be something special and be promising. But he's really effective in the return game. Him and D.D. Westbrook, but D.D. Westbrook, you know, is more of an all-around player. But um, D.J. Chark, I think, is going to be taking uh, Jadon Mickens' spot next year. I don't think I don't think Jadon Mickens comes back next year. I think we cut him or let him go. I'm not sure what his contract stands at right now, but I think we cut him because I think D.J. DJ Chark can do everything Jadon Mickens does, um, despite the fact he has not had a touchdown yet. Um, he's really coming into his own as far as the uh, return game goes. So, you know, the return game, I think it's a B plus. You know, he, he put us in manageable and good field position um, a lot of times. So, DJ Chark had a good game returning the ball. And despite a miss and a blocked extra point, Josh Lambeau still did his thing. He made it a three-point game, knocking a 52-yarder. I mean, not, not a lot of kickers in this league can consistently make over 50-yard field goals. And Josh Lambeau, though, you know, he missed one. He did make a 52-yarder. So, you know, he's still consistent. And he's still one of the better kickers in the league, and he still probably is the best player on our team right now. So, you know, Josh Lambeau, doing good. Um, B-plus for him, because obviously, you know, the blocked extra point wasn't his fault. But the miss, you know, will knock a little bit of points off of him. L Logan Cook also, he did solid. He put the Colts in a couple of uh, tricky situations and as far as field position goes in the second half. I think he punted the ball well. So, again, you know, A for effort there for Logan Cook. Now let's dive into the offense we're six minutes in i bet you after this it'll be like 25 because there's just a lot to talk about here at Treve talks recap video yeah <laughs> like i said six minutes into the take we ain't taking that out this is just consistent rolling off the tongue here so <laughs> the offensive line they did pretty good in the first half um not a lot i don't think i don't even think blake got sacked once he might have got sacked once or twice but if he did, it like I don't remember it. So they did pretty good in the first half. As far as run blocking goes, I mean, they had eight to nine man boxes. The play calling was awful, like in the second half, because it was just a consistent run, run, pass, run, run, pass. It was run, lose a yard, run, gain two or three, third and seven, third and eight. S somebody comes up with a lucky catch or we get a lucky break on a penalty. This offensive line didn't really do too good in the run game because, you know, facing that many man boxes, I get it, I understand. But like I said, they did good in the first half. And then Brandon Linder, a franchise piece, and Eric Flowers, who we j just started his first game for us this season, both got hurt. And the rest of the game, pressure was in Blake's face the whole time. Um, you know, the announcers were just eating Blake alive. They're eating this whole offensive system alive. Like, I just, I don't know. But I thought it worked pretty good because, you know, with the pressure coming, you know, taking the check downs right away, it's not bad. It's not a bad thing. And that's probably what was going on is, you know, pressure is just getting into his face. And, you know, he's just dinking and dunking to the running backs. But TJ Yeldon and Leonard Fournette were second and third in the team in receiving yards, uh, respectively, as well. So, as for the offensive line, we're going to be giving them a C-plus on the day. Like I said, they did good in the first half, but in the second half, really slowed down and really kind of, you know, had a lot, allowed a lot of pressure to be in Blake Bortles' his face. So the offensive line didn't do too bad. Like I said, this offense was kind of the saving grace uh, this time around for the Jags, which is usually supposed to be flipped around. This defense is supposed to be a saving grace, but this offense has looked better than it has in a lot of weeks. So, you know, there's there's some positives to be taken out of this game. Um, unfortunately, one of them is not a playoff push because now our season's probably officially dead 3-6. and six, But it's the way she goes. So C-plus for the offensive line. 
As far as the wide receivers go, Dante Moncrief stepped up in a big way against his former team, getting 98 yards, including an 80-yard touchdown pass uh, from Blake Bortles. So, you know, Dante Moncrief, uh, though he's kind of inconsistent, he's kind of came into his own. Has he earned the amount of money we paid him? No. But has he done his job some weeks and some weeks he hasn't? Yeah. So Dante Moncrief, you know, he, he did good this week. Which I will give to him. Because most weeks, you know, we have TJ Yeldon leading us in receiving yards. But this time we actually have a wide receiver. Um, so can we just all sign a petition? I'll start it. For TJ Yeldon to play slot receiver. Because I swear to God, he is either... He might lead the Jags in receiving yards. I, I'm not 100% sure who does right now. But, like, thinking about it and looking at it, I would not be surprised if TJ Yeldon led the Jags in receiving yards right now. So, let's just have him play slot receiver, because it's not like we're using fucking Carlos Hyde at all. I have Carlos Hyde be the third down back, and TJ Yeldon just play slot receiver, man. It's just, that is just what it'll take for us to go 10-6 and six and make the playoffs. So, <laughs> um, D.D. Westbrook, he had a solid game as well. I think a lot of teams are kind of realizing the fact that he's our number one wide receiver, uh, the best wideout that we have, so they are really doing all they can to cover him up. And shut him down because, you know, he's a main source of the uh, offensive targets. So, that's the way she goes. James O'Shaughnessy had a great game. One of the better games um, I've ever seen him play. You know, he was reliable. He caught the ball yards after the catch, so on and so forth. And, oh, something else that I forgot to mention. Um, talking about the special teams. We ran a fake field goal, which is the first successful fake field goal the Jaguars have ever ran. And I believe he threw that to O'Shaughnessy. Uh, Logan Cook did. It was either to O'Shaughnessy or Blake Bell. Blake Bell as well. You know, these backup tight ends, they stepped up and they had a good game this week. So, uh, you know, putting in James O'Shaughnessy, the tight ends and the wideouts, you know, they're pass catchers. I think that's only fair. Um, Rashad Green should never come back. You know, you know, how he's always the guy we cut and then bring back, cut and then bring back. Let's just cut him, leave him. Like, that was his opportunity. And you fumble. In that situation, man, you can't do that. Just let him go. Let him go. The wide receivers as a whole, including the tight ends, are going to get a B. The Rashad Green fumble, if that didn't happen, they might have even gotten A. Dante Moncrief played well. Uh, TJ Yellen, Leonard Fournette, both as pass catchers. Uh, Leonard got a receiving touchdown as well as, well as a rushing touchdown, two touchdowns um, on the day. So, you know, pass catchers as a whole, they'll get a B, and I think that is fair. Now let us talk about the quarterback position. <laughs> the thing is... Is who's going to get fired or who are we going to blame? Because you can't blame it on Blake Bortles this week. This is how Blake Bortles should be playing all the time. And that's just a testament to how much Leonard Fournette truly means to this offense. 68 completion percentage, which is a good completion percentage. 320 yards, 2 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. That is how Blake Bortles should be every single week. If we have Leonard and Bortles is playing like that consistently, we're a whole different fucking football team. But unfortunately, you know, there's some shit. There's some shit that happens in games that make you not lose, I mean, not win games. So, And one of them was a fumble. The defense couldn't do anything, really. We didn't really deserve to win that game. But Blake Bortles went out there, did his job, did what he needed to do. The announcers the whole time were just fucking hating on this dink and dunk system we had, this whole West Coast scheme. But it was working. Like, I, the announcers this game were making me so angry. Also because they said Leonard Fournette only had one touchdown when he had two. And then they kept on bringing up that Week 2 game against New England. Like, I swear I heard that Week 2 game against New England at least four or five times. At least four or five times. So, with that being said, we are going to be giving the quarterback, Blake Bortles, a solid B-. minus. Like I said, he went out there. He did his job, and he did what he needed to do. Now I realized I skipped over skipped over the running backs. So here we go with the running backs. Leonard Fournette did good. He got over 100 yards all-purpose. You can tell he's a bit, you know, not out of shape, but, you know, out of game form. You know, like he hasn't played football in a while, and it's showing. So, you know, you know he's, he got winded. And, you know, TJ Yeldon, he got more involved in the passing game, and Carlos Hyde again was just completely and utterly irrelevant. So, that being said, the running backs will get a C on the day. Uh, Leonard Fournette had a good day, but again, only averaging 3.7 yards per carry, which is kind of sad. But, as a whole, these running backs, they did alright. C, 
Uh, C is a fair grade to give these running backs, in my opinion. Now let's talk about the offense's final grade. I'm going to be giving them a B-. minus. Like I said, I think this is one of the better games this offense has put together in a long, long time. Really a come-from-behind story, almost being able to win if it wasn't for that one mistake. And um, this is just the best, as an offense, one of the best offensive games we have put together in a long, long time. Like I said, I know it's hard to be positive in a situation like this, but you got to take it for what it is. And definitely, this offense is deserving of a B- minus grade. Now, let us talk about the defense. Now, I think the defense is definitely going to be a bit sh shorter than the offense. Because the offense, we had a ton of stuff to talk about that they did well. As for the defense, there's just not a lot I can say. You let Eric fucking Ebron, Eric Ebron, whoever that is. I mean, obviously, I know who fucking Eric Ebron is. You fucking Colts fans in the comments are going to get so mad. Eric Ebron was a first round pick. Shut up. I know who Eric Ebron is. He's just not that great. He's not a consistent tight end. He's just not. That's how it goes. Uh, Telvin Smith just did awful. Like I said in the beginning, if there's been anybody that's taken a bigger step back than Telvin Smith in the whole NFL, I'd be surprised because he's just taken a huge step back just as a player as a whole, man. Miles Jack did his job, but Telvin, man, you are really bringing down these linebackers. I said in week two, it's hard for me to grade these linebackers under a B because they're both such consistent and good players. But as the season rolled on and rolled on and rolled on, you have been the problem, man. You have just been the problem. Telvin Smith has struggled all season long. He has not been doing his job. He struggles in zone coverage. We extended him last year. And this is just, it's terrible. Terrible. Linebackers get D. At, linebackers get an F. Because all those tight end touchdowns were in a linebacker zone. So that's simple. F. F for the linebackers. As for the defensive backs, the corners did a good job in man-to-man -man defense. But Todd Wash insists, insists that we play the zone coverage. Because that's just the strength of this defense, isn't it? The zone coverage. Telvin Smith, best zone coverage linebacker I've ever seen. Fucking Jalen Ra Barry Church, dude. Barry Church is terrific at zone coverage. Fucking awesome. Barry Church is literally such a sack of shit. Like, he's bad. Barry Church is straight bad. He's not good. He's not mediocre. Barry Church this year is straight bad. Bench him. Bench him for Ronnie Harrison. Because Ronnie Harrison has shown some promise. Barry Church has not... Barry Church just needs to go. Like, we need to let him go this offseason because he's old. He's struggling. He got laid out today. He's not good anymore. He's peaked. 2017 was his peak. And that's what I was kind of scared of because there's some of these guys that are on this team where I was like, dude, 2017 might be their peak. That's because we got to win it now. And Barry Church is one of those guys. That's where he peaked. He wasn't going to get any better than that, unfortunately. But that's just the way she goes. And that's hard, man. It's really hard. AJ Boye didn't play again. Tyler Patman and DJ Hayden both kind of did an all right job. Like I said, man-to-man -man coverage. And also, let's talk about Jalen Ramsey's tweet a little bit if you're this far into the video. I don't think it means anything. I really, I really don't think it means anything. I think y'all just need to take a step back and calm down. Because how do you even know that's what it's about? Like, how do you even know that's, what's it, that's what it's about? Like, it could be about something totally different. Totally different. Jaguar fans always like to blow everything just out of proportion. Anyway, so the defensive backs on the day, they get a D minus. Just damn. Andrew Luck was just picking us apart, man. He's out there. Props to Andrew Luck, too. He's came back strong. He's doing his thing. Andrew Luck is a good quarterback, you know. It's hard to beat him. You know, I was a little skeptical on him after the injury, you know, not knowing how he would play because he hasn't thrown football in a while, but... He's doing his job, he's doing his thing, and he's doing a good job doing it. So props to Andrew Luck there. Now the defensive line, let's talk about that. They played really well against the run. There was a couple of big runs, but as for the most part, I think the defensive line did really good against the line. Calais Campbell especially. Calais Campbell played out of his mind this game. Um, you know, being able to tackle backs in the backfield, you know, really reading where they're going to be going. It was, it was fun to watch. You know, Marcel Darius and Avery Jones also played... Um, really, really solid. So against the run, they did really, really well, in my opinion. But when you have Andrew Luck back there, who's a good quarterback, 
He's a good quarterback. He can pick apart the zones. If you literally have zero pressure on him and zero sacks, what is going on? What is this team now? What is this team now? We went from Saxonville to Lastonville, and Colin Coward was right. Colin Coward was right. And that sucks. Man, that sucks. Because we're not Saxonville anymore. We're not. We're Lastonville. We're last place in the division. We're the worst team in our division right now. And it ain't going to change. It ain't going to change until we change. And that's just, the sh that's just the brunt of it. There's a couple of players that need to go in order for us to be successful. And I think Blake Bortles did a good job, but unfortunately he's one of them. This offensive line needs a true anchor, because Andrew Norwell is supposed to be that guy, but he's not. We need a true anchor there, and we need a leader on the offense as far as a quarterback goes. We also need a number one wide receiver that's actually consistently good. We need to go out there and make more splashes in free agency and do some things. Because this team, it's crazy. It's crazy how things change in the NFL. But the defensive line as a whole, they get a D, C, C minus. Because like I said, they did well against the run, but pass rushing wise, they did awful. Now it is time to give the defense a final grade, and the defense gets a D from me. They went out there, they did awful. There's not much else I can say. Giving 29, giving up 29 points in the first half. Um, though they did their job in the second half, I think that was more of the offense not letting the defense come onto the field. So again, I think it's fair. A D rating for this defense is more than fair. Now let's talk about your favorite time of the week, my favorite time of the week, and everybody's favorite time of the week. Players of the week, and trust me, some guys stood out in my opinion. So as for the special teams, I'm going to give it to DJ Chark. I think DJ Chark was able to go out there, return kicks really well, put us in favorable field position, and he's really coming to his own as far as the returner goes. So DJ Chark, who was just really awkward and really wild, finally gets a player of the week somewhere. It's going to be on the special teams uh, side of the ball. So congratulations to DJ Chark. As far as the offense goes, this one was a toss-up, but I'm going to have to give it back to the comeback kid. I'm going to give it to Leonard Fournette. Though he had those yards per carry, I really think he's a difference maker on this offense. He really opens up so much for this offense to do. Um, other guys that I was considering, Blake Bortles, I think he did his job. He went out there and did his job. Dante Moncrief as well, impressing um, against his former team. He was also in consideration. But I think after all is said and considered, I have to give it to my boy Leonard Fournette because he went out there and he was a difference maker for this offense. As for the defense, I'm giving it to Calais Campbell, the true leader of this defense and the man that was out there making plays consistently uh, drive in and drive out. So, you know, Calais Campbell went out there, had a good game, and your Jaguars fall to 3-6 and six on the season and it hurts really bad. I want to say we'll bounce back, but unfortunately probably won't. And that was my Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts week number 10 recap, players of the game, and position grades. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Treve Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trevon Pixley. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Dems are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.